Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Studios, and today we're having a look at the Thermal Take Versa H17. Brilliant case for $50, let's have a look and see why I think that. But before that, let's have a word from Rockin' IT. Thanks to Rockin' IT for making this video possible. They offer all sorts of parts based in South Africa, so wait to the end of the video, or check the link in the description to learn more. The Thermaltake H17 is a Micro ATX tower with four expansion slots. It has a acrylic side window if you want it, otherwise it drops down to $45 with the non-windowed version of the case. It has a power button, reset switch, audio in, audio out, two USB 2s and a USB 3. It has a removable magnetic dust filter on the top as well as a removable but non-magnetic dust filter underneath the power supply, which is a nice addition. It also has a pretty decent space for cable management at the back with a couple tie-down points, as well as a couple screws that come in the box, some screws for 2.5-inch SSDs, some 3.5-inch hard drives. It comes with a couple zip ties, as well as some screws for your motherboard and for fans. I'll be doing a build with a Ryzen 3 and a B450MK from Asus, two different sized drives and a GTX 1060 just to show you a very basic build inside. The PC won't turn on unfortunately because I won't have any RAM, but that's about all I can say about that. Installing hard drives is pretty cool in this case, you put some rubber pads on them and then lock them into place, it's pretty cool. You ignore one of the pads though um, and use the last one which is included to screw the hard drive in. This actually makes it very easy to do, and I'm very impressed with the little design choice there. It also happens to be exactly the same for 2.5 inch drives as well. Installing the power supply is as normal as it gets. It supports standard ATX power supplies and the four screws at the back as expected. I recommend pointing the fan down as there isn't any ventilation above the power supply really. A little bit of a gap, but not really that much. Cable management is pretty good in the case. It has a couple holes at the top as well as on the side by the motherboard, as well as underneath the motherboard, which even some OTX cases seem to forget to do sometimes, and I really like that inclusion. Motherboard installation was fairly simple, it fits really easily. I do have slightly smaller than usual micro ATX motherboard, but it was a pretty easy fit. I need to add one more standoff for this particular board. All well, the rest of the standoffs were already installed. Cable management, like I said, was fairly easy to do, and I'm just showing you a little time lapse of uh, sorting out the cable for the single 120mm fan included in the case at the back. There aren't any other fans, but that seems plenty. The case has support for another 120 or 140 at the top, as well as two 120s at the front. Installing the graphics card is fairly simple. You just pull up the tab and uninstall the two or however many you need slot covers, and otherwise installing the graphics card is, as you expect, fairly easy and then just tighten the one screw or two and then just lower that bracket down again, plug in the PCI Express power and you're done. Next, installing a 2.5 inch drive, for example, this little laptop one I had here, uh, it would usually be an SSD, but in this case I grabbed this. It's exactly the same as the hard drives, you can slot it in and then screw in the final screw and then just route your cables through like so. You can also install them on the opposite side of this, but you can't do both at the same time. So you can either have them both facing uh, outwards on display or at the back. But otherwise, there we go. The case is a pretty cool, easy one to build in. I love the design and it really is simple. It is professional looking and is really nice to work in. So I love the case for the price. It's a $50 PC and I must say it is a pretty good case. I highly recommend it if anyone's looking at buying a micro ATX PC. And remember your motherboard selection is a little bit limited because um, ATX is definitely the more popular choice nowadays. However, micro ATX and mini ITX boards will fit in this case, so you still have a decent selection. I went with a Ryzen build here, as I recommend doing if you're on a budget. Otherwise, cable management in this case was actually pretty good. There's plenty of space back there, like I said before, and it was super easy to do, even with very little effort. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. There's a Discord server below if you'd like to join that. And look out for my less than $500 PC build, which will be coming next week. There'll be a card above once it's been released. Thank you everyone for watching, and goodbye. I will see you in the next one.
Huge thanks to Rockin' IT for making this video possible. There are for all kinds of products, including PC hardware, drones, their own custom PCs, and more. All of this for a competitive price. Check them out in the link in the video description.